Our two return men as Florida State will get the ball first. To the left of your screen is that fabulous sophomore, Terrell Buckley. And to the top of your picture is Shannon Baker, the fastest knoll who can truly fly. And to handle the kickoff duties, barefooted and all, is a Florida native from Boca Raton. And Rob Imperato. We're glad you're here. Four quarters of NCAA action on Sunshine Network. Florida State, all during the fall, Paul, has worked very hard on the kicking game. They gave up almost 400 yards of return yardage in the first two games last year and had very little of their own. Baker and Buckley ready to go back. Two fellows with a flair for the dramatic await the opening kickoff. And when you can hit it like that, as does Rom Imperato, that negates a return. He put that thing seven yards deep. So Brad Johnson and company will begin at the Seminole. 20 yard line first and 10 let's take a look at the FSU offense tonight there is Brad Johnson 6 6 very tall out of Black Mountain North Carolina who has thrown but one touchdown pass in his career it came a year ago against Louisiana Tech Edgar Bennett the fullback the sophomore amply at the tail Matt Fryer a possession receiver a redshirt freshman Lawrence Dossey the sole surviving member of the Fab Four Robbie Baker over the football, flanked by Hayward Haynes, the lone senior, Dixon and Mancini at the two tackles. The first play of the night, the Knowles in the eye from the 20. Baker with the snap, Johnson play action to go airborne. Looks to set up the screen and does. It's Ampli to the 30, a block 35 and ruled out of bounds shy of the 36 yard line. The tackle made by Robert Jones, the inside linebacker. A high percentage pass, a little confidence builder for Johnson against an aggressive defense. Well, when you got a new guy with his first start, what do you do? You do the easy. You see Ampley, the play action up the middle, and they roll out to the right. You remember Ampley made his, his mark as a receiver early in his career last year. Edgar Bennett was hit after the completion by Brad Johnson, and it's a fumble. Darren Bynum with the hit. And it was recovered by Derek Fields, the safety. And East Carolina earns the first turnover of the game. And here again is how it happened. Bennett out of the backfield. Well, they've worked a lot in the fall on getting the ball to the fullback. You see Bennett with a great hit there by Bynum, number 15. And then the ball is scooped up. Remember, the ball is past the line of scrimmage past the original line of scrimmage the ball can now be advanced by the defense this year that's our new rule change and uh, ECU taking advantage of it right there well the Pirates are in business benefiting from the first turnover this evening they're the backs and receivers Jeff Blake as we mentioned from Sanford just north of Orlando at the helm with Daniels and Van Buren check that Daniels will not start tonight Michael Rett also from Florida and Hollywood Florida will open at the fullback slot Keith Arnold anchors that offensive line Tom Scott the tackle weighs 335 pounds the first snap of the night off the left side earns a quick four Billy Reagans comes racing up to make the stop the ball carrier in your picture as you saw David Bassett the defensive line a pair of Ostazewski's open this evening. Well, they showed Todd McIntosh there. Moss and Grady Ross on the outside. Abbott and Carruthers, the two inside linebackers. On second down, running the option. It's the fullback that takes the inside handoff, and that's something we're going to see a lot of this evening as Carruthers makes the stop. Michael Redd, the fullback on the carry, setting up third down and short. McCorvey, Reagans, Fowler, and Buckley with Reagans, Keith, the lone senior in that revamped secondary. Only three seniors on that defensive side right now. Possession snap for Blake and the Pirates just underway. Florida State turned the ball over. It will be close and indeed a first down. Rhett, the junior, at 205 pounds and called by his head coach at Lewis, the toughest man I have ever coached. The hard-nosed Rhett earns the first for East Carolina. you got to remember when Bill Lewis talks about the hard-nosed player, remember he spent seven or eight years at the University of Georgia right after they won their national championship and all of those defensive teams. So that's quite a compliment for a fullback, an offensive guy. 
It's first and 10 at the 12. Penalty markers down. We may have had motion prior to the snap. Referee Joe Ryder there discussing things. Illegal procedure. Pirates. The first mistake they've made of any kind. Our referee tonight is Joe Ryder. There's a dead ball foul. Illegal procedure on East Carolina. Repeat first down. Bill Lewis's team arrived here at midnight last night. Lewis and company wanted few distractions for this evening's game, and they have certainly come out to earn the early advantage. Again, the fullback with the carry, and it's David Daniel who was slated to start, and then the last-minute change, the 223-pound junior from Greenville, North Carolina. Nose tackle Joe Ostazuski from Boynton Beach. 258 pounds. You see his brother to the right of your picture, and Henry Ostazuski, who weighs two pounds more. And Troy Sanders at 272. Like every other position, it seems, a revamped front. Second down. Here is the pitch with the football. Cedric Van Buren taken down at the 13-yard line. Leon Fowler. What a good, solid tackle by the sophomore free safety from Fort Myers. Well, Fowler brings a lot of dimension back to that free safety position because he is so big at 6'2", right at 200 pounds, and he can run. He really filled the alley well there as he came up on uh, Van Buren trying to get through the seam, and those are the kind of tackles that the uh, free safety has to make in the option attack. Third and 12, it was a game of three. East Carolina well within field goal range. Wide open, it'll be a touchdown! Cedric Van Buren was left alone in the flat. Nobody picked him up. The tailback. And it's 6-0 East Carolina. East Keith, when Blake stood up to throw the ball, there was no one within 15 yards of that man, the sophomore from Charleston, South Carolina. You see Carolina. McCorvey, excuse me, Paul, you see McCorvey working on the bottom of your screen. He did not line up in the proper position, and they went with a one-back set, tailback out. Easy six. Imperato with the point after try. That's good. He's kicked 38 in a row during a solid four-year East Carolina career. You saw the penalty marker. And the personal foul call will be assessed on the ensuing kickoff. At the moment, with less than three minutes gone in this football game, Bobby Bowden has cause for concern. The opening day jitters have continued for his nose. It's 7-0. East Carolina. Those are do a great block. The gate on the play was a 29 yards off the left side. Nothing fancy here, just working upfield and then outside. You see the great moves that Amp has. He may not have the most blazing speed in the world, but he's got those nifty little feet, makes people miss, continues to hit upfield. His third carry this evening. He'll get it a fourth time. Spinning inside the five to the four-yard line. Ernie Lewis, the linebacker, came down the line, the sophomore from Sanford, Florida, in Seminole High School, a 213-pounder. Made the hit. The four inside linebackers for East Carolina, Jones and Burnett, the starters, and Barnhill and Lewis will all see a lot of action. They're all very gifted athletes, as you saw right there. Second and goal, Johnson looking into the end zone. Guns that way. And it's touchdown time for Tallahassee. Lawrence Dawson, what a grab. He took it away from Chris Hall, who had inside position, Keith. Dossie used his height, went over to Hall's back, and hauls it in his 14th career touchdown. Well, he got number 14 to Harway. Johnson lays the ball up just a little bit too much. You see Hall go up, and Dossie just takes it away from him. That's the experience of Dossie. Although Chris Hall's a junior, Dossie has played, and in fact, with those two catches now, 22 games in a row with a catch, Paul. 
Andrews, the left footer, adds the extra point, and we're tied at 7 all with 5-12 remaining in the first quarter. A fabulous grab by Dossie, and the Knowles have even things. Keyed by the fine return for Florida State by Terrell Buckley, the Knowles have rather rapidly marched down the field and done so in a half dozen plays. It took but two minutes plus, and it's Dossie. Who else? Why not? A tribute to the Fab Four in the 1980s. Dossie hauling it in for Brad Johnson. You've got to remember, too, Dossie was really not, as this is the first game he's really ever started. He played behind Ronnie Lewis all those years, and Coach Bowden was looking to him for great leadership in the fall, which he provided, and you see right there for Florida State's first points of the year, he goes to him as well. The two return men for East Carolina are Deion Johnson, a junior, and Cedric Van Buren, a sophomore, and Richie Andrews, who nodded us at 7 all. The three-year letterman who has won the kicking duties this year in a heated duel with Bill Mason will trigger the action once again. Mason and Andrews seem as if they have been around forever. He hit this one very well. Two yards into the end zone, Dion downs it. I guess for those of us who thought the days of Dion returning kicks in Tallahassee were over, uh, we were mistaken. Well, it's been a it's been a year or so since we had a Dion on Dope Campbell, but uh, this one is just uh, maybe not as exciting, but certainly can do really do it. Right now, East Carolina is doing it, leading seven to nothing. They took over on a fumble, their key possession by Edgar Bennett when hitting the flat, and that man Blake marched him right on into the end zone. He has the ball first and ten here. He has been rather efficient. We'll see a lot of single back sets tonight. And we have one here and working the right side fighting for Daniels the lone back Henry Astazuski who is taking over for Eric Hayes at that left defensive tackle slot number 74 reached out his left arm and made this stop a big game for him trying to fill some very large shoes figuratively and literally well, Hayes will be starting in the NFL tomorrow. Ostrzewski starting for Florida State tonight. Call it a game of two, second and eight. Play action, look out, here comes Trevor with sack time. Howard Dinkins, who has been nagged all fall by injury, did not display it there. He charged from the top of your screen to knock down Blake the first sack this evening. He'll come from your right. Blake's going to roll to his left, and as he turns back, bingo. Untouched. Dinkins didn't start tonight. Grady Rawls started ahead of him, but a premier pass rusher as a junior from that outside linebacker position. It's third down, and we'll call it 18 yards to go. The loss on the play was of 10. And as Blake approaches the line of scrimmage, he asks the referee for time. He may be saying that he can't hear. 7-7 seven, seven your score, and the reason Blake used East Carolina's first time out was the fact that the play clock had dissolved to zero. He had no choice but to call timeout. We've heard all of the stories about the National Football League trying to speed their games up, and uh, maybe the ripple effect is uh, affecting the, the college game. They're, they're really starting the 25-second clock very fast, Paul, trying to keep things moving. Since that opening possession by East Carolina, Florida State's offense has been in control. Yet the score is still tied. The draw, not a bad call. David Daniels working his way across the 20, up to the 25, hold everything. A penalty marker flies into the pile, too. The stop was made by Kirk Carruthers, the inside linebacker. John Davis, the reserve free safety, helped out as well. And face mask will earn a first down for East Carolina. That was costly. Second time Florida State's been victimized by penalties. You expect that, Paul, in the first game. But regardless, you know Coach Bowden and his staff isn't happy. Not whatsoever. 
This is an East Carolina team that was solid a year ago. Five wins, five losses, one tie in a turnaround year. And they proved that they could play with bigger teams. Case in point here, Michael Rett works the left side and turns it into a gain of five. Joe Ostaszewski, the nose tackle, came down the line of scrimmage to make the hit. There is Joe. Two pounds lighter than his brother. He takes over for Odell Hagens. That's a massive shadow that loomed large at the nose tackle position for the last three years. It's second and five. East Carolina coming out from the shadows of its own goalpost. Blake the fake throws to the boundary. And, well, the timing wasn't perfect on that. Carl Lester Crumpler, a redshirt freshman, simply spun right out of bounds. I've seen prettier passes, but I think the pressure being applied by Howard Dinkins a second time hurried Blake. Well, despite Dinkins' ability to pass rush, he's also a very disciplined rusher. That time we saw him actually turn Blake back inside, and number 89 right there in the lower part of your screen is really the one that forced the ball farther to the outside than Blake intended, and as a result, Crumpler had no choice but to catch it and fall out. Dinkins can really fly. He runs a 4-5. He is a minute. A line to the bottom of your picture. Down the line option, pitching to the short side. The Bulls have the football. Kurt Carruthers fell on it. A costly turnover. David Daniels was all thumbs, the fullback, on the option pitch. Good look. Good look at the freeze option there. Actually, not Daniels. I believe that's Johnson. Deion Johnson. Yep. Carruthers and Buckley coming up, but Carruthers able to fall on the ball. 6 2, 2 12, but uh, you got to believe he's a little bit lighter than that, Paul. Let's go down on the field to Barry Milligan. Thank you, Paul. During that defensive set, offensive coordinator Brad Scott talking to his offensive line saying, Don't worry, they were stopped a couple of times when the Pirates' reads were very good. They're going to start grinding it out, running it out, like they're doing right now, Paul. Indeed, Barry. And play grinds it all the way down to the 10 yard line. 42 games 22 he's already rushed for 62 yards and we aren't out of the first quarter isolation play up the middle good cut back to his right and then straight up the field gaping hole up front great job by that offensive line and then again you see the first guy to him paul misses it takes the second or the third guy to bring him down he's not a one-on-one -on -one first guy up tackle a bowl if you will running back Coach Bobby Bowden hunting tonight his first season opening victory in three years and it's obvious it's not going to come easily Brad Johnson six of eight has been betrayed once on a turnover for 45 yards Lee starts left look at him jitterbug out how quick is he inside the five to the four yard line and he was hauling the linebacker and uh, Let's see, and George Koontz, the defensive end, rather than the linebacker, number 58, on his back, took him for about a two-yard ride. <laughs> and a back penalty against Florida State. This one for a hold. We've had a personal foul. We've had a face mask. And now the Knowles showing there. Still another call. Holding, Holding a major. Florida State, repeat first down. Not sure exactly where the holding occurs, but you can see Amp take it inside and then back outside. As we say, most people say he's not blessed with great speed, but I'm not sure about that. He's very quick, if nothing else. Johnson with the ball inside the 20. Turns and gives it to Lee again. He's rolled out of bounds near the 15-yard line. The tackle made by Ernie Lewis. That Florida linebacker, we've called his name a couple of times this evening, a guy at number 98 for East Carolina right there who had five stops a week ago in the victory over Louisiana Tech. He's one of 20 East Carolina Pirates, Keith, from the Sunshine State that have matriculated the Greenville, North Carolina. A lot of Floridians on this squad, and I know a lot of them have their families coming up and in Tallahassee tonight to watch. Second down and... 18, the ball at the 18-yard line. Johnson underneath to Lee, hemmed in. Hall is there first. 
Lewis the second time. That's not working to the short side. And it's third down. We'll call it a pickup of four. This is standard Bobby Bowden fair, is it not? Utilizing the running backs in the passing game. Well, not only that, they spent a lot of time this fall putting in some extra plays, Brad Scott was telling me, to utilize the fullback in things other than the screen. Bennett and Paul Moore had done such a great job last year in the screens. Now they're utilizing some plays, trying to get them downfield, both out of the eye and the split. Again, trying to keep those running backs active in the passing game. Third and 13, 98 seconds to play in period number one, a seven-all tie. Johnson, airborne for the end zone. Incomplete out of bounds. Right there, hoping to latch on to it, was Dossie for his second touchdown catch of the night. <laughs> Still another spectacular grab. Nearly had it. He made the catch, but was ruled just out of bounds. Defending was a senior. And Donald Porch, as we get another look, is he inbounds or out of bounds? Looks like Johnson lays it out just a little bit much. Dossie, of course, see. catches it. Andrews to attempt the 30-yarder. It splits the uprights, and for the first time tonight, the Seminoles own a lead in this football game. It's 10-7, third-ranked Florida State over visiting East Carolina. In Tallahassee, with the former Seminole defensive back, Keith Jones, I'm Paul Kennedy. Bill Lewis and company wiping their brow on a warm 90-degree night. Temperature was in triple figures this afternoon here today. That it was. We haven't talked about it. You have to think that the heat and humidity down here, because according to all the reports that we've gotten, it's been pretty nice in Greenville during their fall practices. Uh, highs in maybe the moderate 80s, but humidity way down. And, of course, uh, you get down here in this muggy weather, and it'll sap your strength real quick. And uh, certainly Lewis and his crew know about that and hopefully have taken precautions to try to prepare for it. Bobby Bowden saying that he hopes to remain in birdie position this year with his Florida State schedule. He was talking about the national championship, and he equated it to making a birdie. He says if you stay close, if you stay close, if you stay close, sooner or later one of those birdies is going to fall in. And maybe with a young team it happens this year. But he and the Seminole faithful certainly hope it happens within the next couple of years. East Carolina in possession, first play of the second half. They throw underneath, and the pass is caught. And up to the 25, 24-yard line is. Well, it's not Dion Johnson, rather Al Whiting. The split in, a two-year letterman, a South Carolina native, a guy who caught a couple of passes a year ago. They just brought the flanker underneath. Not only that, what they're doing with that one back set and their, and their play action is they're getting the wide receivers and those quick tailbacks, Paul, on our linebackers, on Florida State linebackers. Excellent job of coaching. Third and short, East Carolina picks up the first down, just running behind its fine center in the junior, Keith Arnold. Blake protected the football. And it's first down. One thing East Carolina is doing on this possession is playing excellent defense. The point being that Florida State's offensive weapons are watching this one with the rest of us on the sideline. But with the veer attack and with Blake able to keep the ball on the ground and throw accurately, as you see there, uh, you can run off the clock. He is 5 of 6 for 34 yards, as you saw. Michael Keeping Rett. it on the ground this time, Michael Rett works in the middle. East Carolina, Ostrzewski and Dinkins on the step. Excuse me, Paul. East Carolina running right up. Arnold and Martin, number 61 and number 71. They're guard and tackle. The returning starters from last year and trying to get Red and the other running backs right in between them on the dive, option one of the veer. Second down and eight. Blake optioning to the far side of the field, running room for Van Buren. Van Buren inside the 20. Keeps those legs churning and is finally hauled down at the 17-yard line. Stop made by John Davis. The secondary is having to come up quite a bit here early and make tackles. Billy Reagans, the hard-hitting strong safety, helped out too. When you run against the veer or the wishbone, anything with the option, your free safety has got to be a strong safety. Here you're going to see Davis come up and make the good hit, but Van Buren, with great determination, keeps moving upfield. It's third and four, a lone back set. Blake has tied. Fire. Patted down by Leon Fowler. At 
the goal line. Intended for Charlie Tyson. Fowler with the touchdown saving deflection, the sophomore. The guy that the Florida State staff calls our quarterback defensively on the field. You can see him right there in the screen as he was eyeing the receiver and then closing on him, taking a route underneath him to make the ball go over him to be completed, playing like a senior, just a sophomore. This will be a 34-yard try with an angle by Imperato. He has plenty of leg on it. And we have a tie game for the second time this evening. Imperato, we knew he could kick off. He can also kick field goals. The Boca Raton senior. It's a 10-10 tie at Doe Campbell. Did you expect this, Keith Jones, East Carolina, a perfect 10 thus far against Florida State? Well, I don't think you expect it. Uh, I think, unfortunately, Florida State fans uh, <laughs> have almost uh, come to appreciate it or get used to it. Third year in a row, Florida State uh, with an opening opponent in a dogfight. Baker to the right of your picture, the sophomore. It runs like a 4-3 plus. And Terrell Buckley was to the left, number 27. Imperato is enjoying things back in his native state, and the barefoot specialist hits it a ton. This will be Buckley. Three yards into the end zone saying no, sir. And the Knowles have yet to return a kickoff against Imperato. An outstanding specialist. Nine plays, 33 yards, the trim, 341 off the clock. And here comes Brad Johnson. It seemed longer than that that he was over there with Bobby Bowden. Brad Johnson through the air is 7 of 10 tonight, as you see. The lone touchdown strike coming to Lawrence Dossi. On first and 10 from his 20-yard line. The inside handoff, 5, 6, 7 yards. A good carry. Working the middle, Paul Ward, the junior two-year letterman out of Miami and Killian High School there, who last season rushed for close to 180 yards. We're going to see a lot of Paul Moore in 1990. Here's a very respectable 4.4-yard average. Good cut back to his left right there. You see him run through an arm tackle, pick up seven. Both Moore and Bennett from the fullback position give Florida State a, a great one-two punch, if you will. It's second down. It's Dossie in the slot. Baker to the bottom of your picture and working this way. Here comes Paul Moore. Look at that speed to turn the corner. I head to the 35-yard line. When a fullback can turn the corner like that, you truly have a weapon in your arsenal. Adrian Barnhill, a junior inside linebacker from Greenville, North Carolina, knocked him into the Seminole bench. Here's a good look at it. That's 245 yards, Paul, turning that corner. Great block by Dossie. He's able to get upfield. 245 yard, uh, pounds on the move. First and 10 Florida State in a 10-all tie early in the second quarter. With the snap from Baker, Johnson rolls in the flat and guns to the boundary and is caught by Dossie who breaks the tackle up near midfield. Hall, the cornerback, let him get away. And Chris Hall is still on the field. Johnson with one of his th rare rollouts delivers the ball and watch Dossie. One of the things John Eason, the receiver coach at Florida State says is when Dossie gets the ball, he thinks he's a fullback. He really knows how to get up field after the catch and complete a pass play. There you see Paul who had missed that tackle. And obviously he is in pain. A Fort Dix, New Jersey native. A guy who had recorded six tackles a week ago against Louisiana Tech. Watch what happens here. It appears that he takes a knee on the side of his leg from his teammate in the uh, linebacker Jerry Dillon. The defensive end outside linebacker who came up and that's extremely painful. Extremely painful. It, it, it sounds it sounds foolish to say it probably hopefully is just a bruise but sometimes it can uh, get right down into those muscles on your thigh and right above your knee, and it can be extremely painful. Hopefully it's nothing, uh, nothing serious.
Out of town scores. You see that Auburn having little trouble with Cal State Fullerton. The visitors from the West. What are those two teams <laughs> doing <laughs> playing each other? Motion along the line of scrimmage. It appeared that East Carolina jumped. The Knowles will get a free play, and Ampley turns it into a first down. So often happens when a team makes a mistake and tends to wall, and Florida State's offense did not. East Carolina eased off, and it was a quick 10 by the scat back in Lee, who's having a big season opening. 74 yards already. Came into the contest. Very well respected by the Florida State coaches after his freshman year. Makes a good cut back to an open hole right here as he finishes up this run. And showing that elusiveness that uh, Brad Johnson and his crew are looking for. Johnson taking a good long look at the sideline. Mark Rick, the quarterback coach, Brad Scott, the offensive coordinators, teaming with Bobby Bowden to relay the play to him. A measure, it's not a first down, just inches shy. Good to hear that war chant again, is it not? Needing but a yard. Bootleg and gunning. Incomplete. Hunting Shannon Baker in double coverage. One thing I will say for East Carolina is the play was broken up inside the 20. Ed Brogdon, the free safety, and Donald Porch, the left corner, were not fighting the fake nor the rollout by Johnson. I can tell you that when Brad watches this uh, tomorrow or Monday, he's going to wish he had that one back. If he was able to throw and trigger that pass just a little bit quicker, Shannon had done a good job, Baker had, of getting in the seam. He'll learn from that. Comes with experience. Johnson's fourth incomplete pass. The give up the middle. Bennett broke two tackles, or rather Paul Moore did. Spun out of one that had him dead to rights in the backfield. Spun out another one at the line of scrimmage. And it's a first down inside the 35. They mark, mark him dead at the 31-yard line. Good effort here. Initial contact up at the line of scrimmage. Number two runs through both of them. And then finishes it off headed upfield. Third er carry, total of 25 yards. Yeah. Ernie Logan, the defensive tackle, missed him first. Jerry Dillon missed him second. Donald Porch did not miss. Although it's still another first down. A 10-10 tie, just under 11 minutes remaining in the first half. Johnson on the march. Dossie on the receiving end at the 24, the 23, close to the 22. Derek Fields, the sophomore strong safety and a Florida native, too, from Clearwater, made the tackle. This is uh, the Lawrence Dossie play. He just runs down about eight or nine yards and turns outside and then just trying to get the ball to him and then let him do something with it. East Carolina, very patient, very disciplined. They corner him in. And the gain on the play... Is good for nine yards. Second and one. With two tight end. Johnson, perhaps a busted play. All alone. You don't like to see your quarterback in the flat. And a linebacker of the caliber of Robert Jones have a free shot at him. Bobby Bowden saying, what is going on there? I'm not sure, Paul, if it's busted assignments or whether Johnson's having a difficult time with the plays being waggled in. Obviously, there's confusion. He turns around. There's no one there. He works down the line. I guess he's doing his Jeff Blake impression of uh, how a option quarterback looks at 6'6", six, 6'5". Six, six, well, the good news in all of that running around was the fact that he earned the first. The Knowles have certainly been respectable there. On a warm night, I promise you, no one is in better condition than that man, Brad Johnson, a former two-sport standout who gave up basketball to concentrate on football full-time and earn the starting chores. He stumbled, coming away from center. Paul Moore does not. Paul Moore may not have been the star when this night began. He was the understudy at fullback, but he certainly has a lead role in this drive for FSU. Johnson seems to get tangled up at the line, but he's able to successfully hand the ball off. And Moore, with that big bulk of his, right at 250 pounds, able to move over in the middle. 
The gain on the play is of nine yards. Moore has rushed for 34. In an eye set inside the 15, Johnson gives to Ampley. The middle is clogged up, and Lee's not going anywhere. Solid inside play by East Carolina. Shane Hubble, the junior right tackle from St. Pete at Northeast High School. Number 53 got there first. The same working there on the left does a good job of getting rid of Howard Haynes and just works his outside shoulder free. Brings down Lee for little or no gain. Yeah, Hubble was a guy that played on a, a city championship football team at Northeast a few years ago. So he's glad to be back, too. Is there a loose ball? Indeed, but Florida State fell on it. That would have been a terrible turnover at this stage of things. Moore losing the handle. It's second and goal for FSU. Let's watch the ball. Everybody moves left. The ball just comes loose. Kind of a lucky bounce. Ball's right in front of number 73, Reggie Dixon. And he put 278 pounds on it. Right on top of it. <laughs> Second down. And goal from the eight. The Knowles, by our count, cannot earn a first. They are lying in the nine. Play action Johnson has one touchdown pass tonight. Incomplete. At the goal line, there is a flag down, and there was no one in the area of the football, as if a receiver read the defense one way and Johnson another. Here's uh, from early indications that the penalty is against East Carolina. It's the first time tonight they have made a penalty in a critical situation. Well, remember, East Carolina does have a ball game under their belt. They won last week against Louisiana Tech, 27-17. Of course, that's the time when Coach Lewis and his crew uh, hopefully got a lot of Holding their kinks out. East Carolina gets an eligible pass receiver. Half the distance, automatic first down. You mentioned that East Carolina has a game and Florida State does not. That is the first time that Bobby Bowden has allowed that to happen since he's been here. The first time since 1977 that an opponent has played a game before facing Florida State in a season opener. Bowden does not like for that to happen. It certainly plays for the opponent's advantage. First and goal inside the five. Johnson again airborne, wide open, touchdown. Edgar Bennett. <laughs> Bennett was all alone. In the flat. Nobody picked him up coming out of the backfield. Again, Paul, we've mentioned it before. There's an illustration of it. I'm not quite certain. I'll venture a guess. That's a new play for Florida State where they run the fullback out of his formation to the flat. It's not a pass. It's not a delay. He runs right out to receive the ball. Was he on the line when he caught that football? Extremely close. If he is on the line, it's an incomplete pass. Andrews with the extra point. 17 to 10 officially. Florida State 754 remaining in this the first half. And we'll be back in a moment. An 80-yard march for Florida State has earned the Knowles a seven-point advantage with 754 remaining. See if you can tell here. If Bennett, who hauls it in, is out of bounds. Hard to tell from this angle. Certainly you can see how Florida State spread everybody out and got Bennett open over on the sideline. 13 plays for 80 yards. A little more respectable time, Paul. Four minutes and 54 seconds. The last two scoring drives for Florida State and the last one for ECU. Very quick. Johnson with a pair of touchdown passes. I think the first one to Dossie. How long was that? Was that three, four yards? something inside of 10. <laughs> he's, he's not picking up the long ones. Yeah. Here is Andrews. That left foot into it. Must be in the air tonight. He kicks it all the way to the goal line. Johnson, who had a fabulous return the last time out, fails to reach the 20-yard line. Corey and Freeman, a reserve outside linebacker, made the stop. Now let's take another look. Is Bennett's left leg out of bounds when he hauls in this touchdown pass from Brad Johnson. See if you can tell. See if the right one's down first or the left one's down first. 
be right there to right one and the left one may be down together. He's certainly on the line. I don't think there's any doubt about that, but the official right on top of it should have had the best view. A penalty on the play against Florida State. Florida State, the kicking team, five-yard penalty, re-kick. I wonder how you could have illegal procedure. You could have offsides when a kick cover member came across the 35-yard line, but for a legal procedure, would he have kicked prior to? That's the only thing I can think of. He kicked the ball prior to the time of, by being released. And you see Bennett, the traditional football cheer. Hello, Mom. As he tiptoed for a touchdown, number 22. They said they were going to use Bennett as a receiver, and uh, thus far that has been the case. Johnson and Van Buren will get another crack. Johnson, uh, to the left of your picture, runs a 4-5. And the reason that they're aligning like that is to uh, confuse Andrews if he intends to kick it toward either Johnson or Van Buren in particular. Typically, Florida State will try to kick the ball to an area, regardless of who the return man is. But still a good ploy by uh, East Carolina. The ball pushed back to the 30-yard line. We'll do it again. Andrews booms it away. All right, he got all of this one. He still drives it to the goal line. Johnson scoots across the 10, the 15, the 20, flag down 25, and up to the 27-yard line. Barry Milligan. For the first time, Paul, it seemed like the offensive line is finally in sync. After each series, before the last 13 play scoring drive, there were all kinds of questions to line coach Brad Scott and graduate assistant Mark Salva. After that series, there were lots of pats on the back, lots of congratulations. The offensive line finally seems to be in sync. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Barry. There is the uh, indication of the clip. It'll be a, a good half the distance to the goal line. That negates a 28-yard return. The Hurricanes leading homestanding BYU out there in the Rocky Mountains tonight. Blake and company holding their own here. First and 10, but at the 10-yard line, they'll try and pound it out of the middle. Nowhere to run for the lone fullback and David Daniels. Todd McIntosh, a redshirt freshman, seeing his first varsity action, number 94. A lot there of twos, see, a lot of twos in there. Excuse me, Paul. A lot of twos in there for Florida State. Anthony Moss, number 99 in your picture. Joe Ostaszewski over the nose. It's Henry Ostaszewski whose place he is taking. A big snap here, second and ten. You see the five-man front. Blake at the five, underneath, nowhere to run again. Did the ball come loose? Yes or no? The man that made the hit for Florida State is Marvin Jones, the linebacker. Florida State fans will remember Marvin Jones by his brother, Fred. Younger brother, Fred Jones, played at Florida State. You can see a great read by Jones. He shucks one guy, comes up, gets his head upfield, keeps his legs, turns around, stays wrapped up, and down you go. Carlester Crumpler, the freshman on the receiving end. They call Marvin Jones Shade Tree. 220 pound freshman. He got that at practice one day, made the mistake during the break of hanging under a shade tree. His teammates really let him have it. Broken up, 23 yard line. The big hit by FSU's Bill Mason. Pardon me. Pardon me, John Weiss. Bill Mason, the kicker. Weiss, of course, made the hit. Leon Fowler there. Listen to the hands that he put. You can almost sense a jailing call of. 11 people getting a feel for doing it right. Three downs and out. How big is that clipping call now for Florida State? Will enjoy excellent field position or should. John Jett against the roar of 50,000 plus. Gets it away. He hit it very, very well. Terrell Buckley backpedaling from his 40. The 45 midfield boundary. 40. 30. One man to beat. 20. Hurdles. 10. 5. Touchdown. Bobby Bowden 
just said we want to give Buckley as many at-bats as we can. We want him to touch the ball as often as he can. That time, he cracked a home run. A 62-yard punt return for a touchdown. 23-10, Florida State. Andrews makes it 24-10. Timeout on the field, 6-0-2 remaining in the first half. And the special teams tonight are awfully special for the Seminoles. Get a good look at it right here. When Buckley takes the ball right here, that doesn't look like there's anything going on. He just goes right by two ECU players and then dances along the sideline. Now watch him move back into the field to set up a block so then he can wheeze on by. Excellent, excellent run. Good help from all his uh, 10 compatriots. We said that Bobby Bowden had wanted to put starting players on his special teams units. Not only the Buckleys, but the other 10 positions, the guys that block for him, that spring him free. And I think it paid off there. Well, not only that, but it, it gives Buckley an added incentive because he knows he's got all his help. And with Buckley back there, these starters, even defensive starters that might have been in for three or six or eight plays before the fourth down came up, will give that little extra effort because you give Buckley just a little bit of daylight, he makes everybody a hero. The whole, the whole punt return team now looks good because everybody worked together. Buckley, two returns for 71 yards. Welcome back to college football on Sunshine Network, painted garnet and gold. Florida State trailed early in this football game, seven to nothing. When East Carolina benefited from a fumble deep in FSU territory, Blake hurled to Van Buren alone out of the backfield for a 13-yard strike. The Knolls tied it. Lawrence Dossey caught his first TD strike of the year from Johnson. Andrews made it a 10-7 game for FSU. Imperato tied as 10-all in the second quarter. The Knolls have since run off 14 unanswered. And Andrews adrenaline pumping as well. He nearly kicked that one out of the end zone. No return, of course, on the green grass. Have you noted the field has been painted differently? I like it, Keith, by Larry Pendleton and his facilities crew here in Tallahassee. It's really decorated for the debut tonight. Get the offside signal there by Ryder. He Our painted the end tonight. zones white and he put that garnet and gold boundary around him really dressed things up this evening in Doe Campbell a couple of reasons for it number one a new look they've had the same look for four years they've changed that and then that garnet boundary around it is to give them a little bit more to look at offside Florida State five yards re-kick we'll do it again that's twice tonight that has happened in a races of booming effort by Andrews we can certainly see why he won the kicking chores uh, this season over Mason. There is Richie. I'll tell you, a guy that can both kick him out of the end zone or kick him into the end zone and also effectively hit three-pointers is rare indeed. And Andrews can do them both, as can Imperado. The Pirates again 0-8. The call to arms by Florida State. Johnson to the right of your picture. Van Buren to the left. He has a touchdown tonight. Johnson, an outstanding return. A couple of them. Coming up at halftime, Bob Goyne, the director of athletics, to talk about in this day and age, conference alignments and the like. Richie Andrews chops at this one. Van Buren from his two. Make that Johnson from his two already at the 20, the 25. Loses the football. East Carolina falls on it back at the 27-yard line. Lawan Brown was head up for ECU to pounce on it. Forgot one small detail. Well, he's got the ball, the ball. on the wrong arm. He's got to put the ball in his left arm away from the hit. He's going to move upfield, and then somebody just gets an arm on him. It's not even a good hit. He's going to get slapped at right there and just strips the ball away. If the ball's on the other side, that doesn't happen. First and 10. East Carolina certainly wishing to trim into Florida State's growing 14-point lead. Blake, screen back the other way. Bobble. Oh, heavy contact at the 25-yard line. On the receiving end for the uh, Pirates. 
was number 80. And Hunter Gallimore, or make that Luke Fisher on, this, on the uh, receiving end. Good job by Florida State staying disciplined. A lot of misdirection. Had a wide receiver coming all the way back to the right as you looked at it. Tight end back out to the left. Second down, Blake. Down the line option. Keeps a great fake. I want to tell you, when he juked, Sterling Palmer went the wrong way. And Blake carries ahead to the 30, the 33-yard line. Leon Fowler over from the free safety slot to knock him down. Palmer very heralded out of high school, redshirted last year, actually had surgery on both of his feet, and he's now up with the big boys, Paul. <laughs> he's, of course, 6'7", uh, well over 250 pounds, and Blake uh, put a little move on him. At 6'7", Blake went eyeball to eyeball with him and won. Possession snap, needing three, again down the line option running room he has the first out of bounds 40 yard line that was the freeze option or counter option keith coming back to the short side they start left come back this way very difficult to defend florida state with a lot of number twos in there going to counter to his left come back right let's see that big step back so he can move upfield and attack and not just work down the line gets a little seam cuts up for the first down very, very difficult to defend. You'll remember Florida State under Art Baker, used to be a head coach at East Carolina, tried that with Eric Thomas at quarterback several years ago. First and 10, Blake inside a handoff. David Daniels works it. The keep them honest play. Henry Ostazewski back into the game. The junior two-year letterman made the stop. May 17, 1969. A big day in the Ostazewski household. Henry and Joe both arrived seven minutes apart. <laughs> the whole left side of Florida State's defensive line showed up that day into this world. Blake pitches. Johnson trying to avoid tacklers does so. Good run up to the 50. And down he goes. Dinkins pulled him back into old territory. How strong is Howard? He bench presses better than 400 pounds. As he took Johnson, who weighs 166, and yanked him back toward him. Blake with a great read. See him go up the middle to Daniels, and then he'll work downside, and he gets it out quick to Johnson. Good block on the outside. Forces Reagans to try to arm tackle, and a missed tackle by Fowler, and in comes the heavy artillery. That's a pickup of four on the play, so Johnson doubles his output tonight. It's third and one right at midfield, we'll call it. First down. But barely, Cedric Van Buren in the Knoll country. Billy Reagans, the headhunter, the only senior in the secondary, made the stop. Now wait, a penalty lies on the green grass. Our referee and Joe Ryder signaling that it is against Florida State and a face mask call. The fourth major penalty against Bobby Bowden's troops. Something you don't like to see. Although the scoreboard is certainly something Bobby Bowden appreciates. Leading 24-10. First and 10, the ball at the 44. Blake will pitch it. Johnson turns it in inside the 40 down to the 38-yard line. If you can run the option well, it puts such great pressure on the defense, especially when you don't face it every week. It's so tough to prepare for. Troy Sanders, the right tackle, made the stuff. Great play by Reagans out here, but there's nothing he can do. He turns it back inside, but you just can't get off a blocker that quick, and before pursuit gets there, he picks up five. That's why the option is so dangerous when run properly. To the top of your picture is Charlie Tyson, the senior three-year letterman. A little mix-up in the backfield, and the second man through fighting with the football is Michael Rett. They took the fullback, put him in a tailback position, and uh, the free safety, John Davis, backing up Leon Fowler in the game now, made the stop. Last year, among freshmen, only John Davis and Terrell Buckley 
earned letters in the Florida State secondary. That was such a salty group a year ago, but only two first-year players earned letters. Davis was one of them, and that's something he's very proud of. Great special team player last year. Got a lot of time, as you say, on the defensive side as well. Really earned a, a spot for him on the travel squad and plays a lot now in 90. It's the first down. A poor center quarterback exchange. Blake has it. It's almost a wasted down 31-yard line. Clock moving. We are right at two minutes to go in the first half. The scoreboard reading Florida State 24, East Carolina 10. You see that exchange there. I'm not sure. Blake might have been trying to audibleize. You really don't have to do that a lot in the option because if they're stacked in a hole or doing something different, you just go to another one of the plays within the three. A little miscommunication there. Slot left formation, lone setback, Blake. Here comes the heavy pass rush. He fires. He's got it complete. First down, 12-yard line. Charlie Tyson, the senior, makes the catch in front of John Davis. Florida State gambled and blitzed. That left Tyson and Davis one-on-one. -on -one. Great throw by Blake. Watch Tyson. He just gets the ball right over his shoulder. Davis has got a hand in there. There's not much more you can do. That's a 19-yard gain for East Carolina. Threatening now, trailing by two touchdowns, 130 remaining in the first half. A huge drive for the visitors from Greenville, North Carolina. Rolling, throwing, into the end zone, incomplete. We had contact, there's the flag of the call. John Davis collided with the intended receiver in Peter Zolpe, a sophomore, number 89, prior to the arrival of the football. And it's been a tough couple of downs for that sophomore in Davis. It has been tough, Paul. But that's the only way you'll learn. You got to throw him in the fire. Going to be coming right at you. Davis just tries to go over the top. You see him right there on the left edge of the screen, and he gets there a little bit too early. I don't like the call because of where it came from. The back judge should have made that call, not the guy on the on the left hand side, but nevertheless a good call. There is timeout taken on the field. And it's called by Florida State. We'll pause as well. One twenty remaining. The Knolls leading by two touchdowns. Florida State 24. East Carolina 10. But that may change here very quickly. Florida State has just used its first timeout with 120, as you see, to go before intermission. East Carolina threatening. Bobby Bowden with a veteran defensive coordinator and Nikki Andrews upstairs on the headphones. In fact, his defensive staff has remained intact for the better part of six years. They need all that moxie and experience now for they're in a heap of trouble. Two tight ends and I set, they pound the middle. And there is nowhere for Michael Rett. Marvin Jones, young shade tree. Stood like an oak in the hole. Young, aggressive group, those interior linemen, the underclassmen, Wally Burnham, the linebacker coach, has got them really keying quickly inside the 20 in the red zone. They key quickly. You see Jones key quickly, move right into the hole, make a good stop. It is second and goal, again with the two tight end alignment. Johnson, the tailback, will take the pitch. He has a blocker in front. Johnson goes into the end zone. It's a touchdown. An exceptional lead block Deion by Michael Rudd. Deion Johnson earns the TD. That play was executed to perfection. Twenty-four sixteen. as we take another look. Florida State doesn't do a bad job of defending it, but again, with the option, when you can get on the corner so quick, if you do get a block on your lead guys, three or four yards, TD. Imperato to pull. East Carolina within seven, and he does. That is a tremendous drive by the heavy underdogs from East Carolina. Florida State favored in some circles by as much as 30 points. Yet at the half, it's 24-17 as we once again take a look at the touchdown run by Deion Johnson. Everybody moving left, quick pitch, gets the ball out. Good block by the fullback on the first man to contain. And again, you're going to be three or four yards as Johnson is there because of the angles, even if you make a good stop. 
He does. In the arms of uh, Felix the Cat Harris. A 20 yard return. 320 following Buckley's key interception. The defense has made big plays tonight. And Johnson has taken advantage of East Carolina with uh, two turnovers in this football game, and both have led to Florida State scores. Some confusion on the East Carolina side. The 25 second clock is running. On that for a coach is inexcusable. When you had all that time to ready your offense and the right 11 guys were not on the field. Well, you could fry an egg on his neck at the moment. 10-29 remaining in this, the third quarter, the very first game of 1990. East Carolina having to burn what may prove to be an important timeout. With Blake at the helm, down the line option. He pitches, and look at the way Florida State defends it. The running back, and Cedric Van Buren, could not hide from John White. A loss of three. White makes a play you don't expect him to make on that particular time. You expect your strong safety to come on and take on a lead on block and turn a runner back inside to help. That time, White took on the blocker and made the tackle. Yeah, he's one of only two seniors on the field at the moment and a very young defense play action deflected big hit that's leon fowler intended for the tight end fisher the defense is laying them out this is keith jones football right now they are really popping pads out at the base of doe campbell well there's 22 guys on the first and second unit of florida state that all can run and hit that time you see fowler make a great read on the little tight end release one another option number four option if you will of the veer breaks the play up if you don't ask for any better than that yeah and then third and 13 watch the defense cut it loose now the front wall can rush the passer and here they come a four-man rush Blake with flags down has it deflected at the line of scrimmage Henry Ostazewski number 74 batted it away and where the flag was thrown usually that indicates holding let's wait and see there's Henry Look, okay. Looks like he might have gotten a finger or a hand in his eye. Great defense again. And it's Buckley time. <laughs> well, he's done it once tonight. Why not twice? John Jett is going to have to get it all with that black foot. White one on the left, black one on the right. Must make him kick better. He has the snap, the pressure on. He just does get it away. A very tight spiral. He kicked it away from Buckley, kicked it out of bounds. And that's not a bad thing to do. Not unwise, Keith. Out of bounds. Uh, well, look where they spot the ball. It's across midfield inside the 45 field position 42 and a half yard line Bill Lewis won't like that obviously you want to keep the ball out of Buckley's hands coach Bowden his staff knows you can see him there <laughs> what a weapon it is but that time uh, Jack kind of hooked that three wood a little farther uh, to the left than he wanted to the putt was indeed a laugher coach Bowden 24 yards well, the Knolls quickly up to the line of scrimmage, and they can blow this game wide open on this possession, leading 31-17, nine and a half minutes remaining, quarter number three, first and ten Knolls. Excellent field position, East Carolina, 42 and a half, Johnson, both backs out. Firing, caught, spinning, and unable to pick up much more than that was uh, Kevin Knox, the wide receiver. Let's go back down on the field where Barry's standing by. Paul, the last defensive series for the Seminoles, definitely the best of the night. Mickey Andrews had some serious words for his defensive unit at halftime. East Carolina showed him a different look in the first half, a double tight end set that they did not see last week against Louisiana Tech. It messed things up a little bit. With that last series, it looks like the halftime adjustment for Florida State worked. Absolutely. Mickey's son, Ronnie Andrews, providing statistics for us tonight. Ooh. Tom Block. Our spotter on Sunshine Network. Johnson play action. Again throwing this way. Again complete the tight end. Johnson all along. Look at him roll over a pirate. 
at the 20 yard line and he wants more. Richard Wright was bowled over at the 20 by that horse and Reggie Johnson. Coach Wayne McDuffie, offensive coordinator, line coach last year, had an award called the Decleter that offensive linemen work for. You usually don't get one 15 yards downfield, but there's a Decleter by the tight end at the end of about a 17, 18, 20-yard reception. You know, the coaches of East Carolina said that you hear all this talk about Dossie, but they look at the film, and Reggie Johnson is running with him stride for stride as Ampli has stood up. And what I mean by that is the tight end will be going down the field at the hash mark, and you'll see on the film at the top of your picture, say, Dossie flying at 4-5 speed. But there is Johnson matching him step for step, that he truly has been overlooked in all the Fab Four phenomenon, and with all these quality tailbacks and quarterbacks, too, that you really have a superb talent in the senior tight end. Another superb talent there in Amp Lee, just a sophomore. You see there his 85 yards through two quarters plus. No gain on the play. Second, we'll call it uh, five yards, as you see in your picture. Johnson over the middle. Dossie inside the five. Four, three, two, one. And he's frustrated. I thought he was going to get six the way he refused to go down. Ended up with his mouthpiece between his eyes. First and goal. Ernie Lewis on the stop for East Carolina. First and goal. A hide route or an under route to the wide receiver, Dalsey, right up the middle. Now watch him accelerate and fight for that end zone. Watch the legs. Drive, drive, drive. And you'll see right at the end. Oh, <laughs> so close. Five catches for 59 yards for Dalsey. Johnson. Scores. Touchdown, Florida State. This one is popped wide open in the second half by Brad Johnson. With 7.47 to go in the third. He's having a tremendous night. Has now rushed for a touchdown and thrown for three more. 37-17. And as he counts it up himself, here comes Richie Andrews to try and add the point after. Andrews congratulating his quarterback. And the left footer right down the middle. It is a three touchdown lead by the Garnet and Gold. Your score, Florida State 38, East Carolina 17. Look at the line, sir. Somewhere amongst all those Garnet jerseys, they pushed the white jerseys back enough for little bitty six foot five Brad Johnson to kind of root underneath. Yeah, he ran behind Mike Morris, the right guard, number 60, a guy who broke his foot in the fourth game of a year ago and missed the last eight. And you know that had to hurt him deeply. It's great to see Morris back in a Garnet jersey. Five plays, just over 40 yards, 42 yards, following the very poor punt. So a turnover and a special teams mistake. Two East Carolina miscues, keep have Florida State well out in front. Once again, we, we see the quickness of Florida State's uh, scoring drive, just a little under two minutes, five plays, 42 yards. And that's been so typical, Paul, the last year or two about Florida State's offense, a big play offense that moves the ball quickly in for points. Dion on the left needs little introduction. Van Buren at the right. Between them, the referee Joe Ryder. And there is Richie Andrew. 55 points this evening on a warm, muggy night. But a fabulous crowd on hand for Florida State. He hung it high. Johnson comes across the 5-10. Face mask, obviously. Flags all over the field. You had a pretty good look at that. Yes, a view of what it's like to return kicks against the Knolls. A 17-yard effort by Johnson, and he paid a price, too. You can become seriously injured, obviously, if uh, someone grabs a hold of your cage. Everybody wonders why football players have big necks. This is one reason why even the little guys. That's not it. That is a good way to get hurt. Unfortunate. Hopefully the Florida State player not doing it intentionally. Don't see how they could at that high rate of speed, but still very, very dangerous. John Weish with the uh, face mask.
You know what? We've had a holding call and a clip call. Did they call the face mask? I, I didn't see it, Paul. They did not. It, it, it's got to be because they didn't have any more flags left in their pockets. <laughs> I think they uh, overlooked it, to be honest with you. Well, you've got to consider that a break of sorts. Yeah, that's uh, justice not served if you're Bill Lewis. Beneath the throng in Dope Campbell, the lights on. Florida State has been penalized for 55 yards. East Carolina five times 33. We'll remind you, Jeff Blake from Sanford, Florida, his father, Emory Blake, is the head coach at Seminole High School just north of Orlando. And dad can be very proud of his young son. Starting back up to his own goal line. The Knolls are just teeing off now. Michael Rett pounded Joe Ostrzewski, the nose guard, there to make the play. You know, the Ostrzewskis are so very strong. Joe can bench press 415 pounds. His brother, 425. That's an incredible amount of weight. A little more than I did. About twice. <laughs> They've been playing side by side since they were eight years old. Have Joe and Henry still at it here in college. Floating over the middle. Wide open, a big gainer. A foot race. 40, 30, 20. Luke Fisher may go the distance. East Carolina and Fisher back in the game. 91 yards. Carruthers giving chase. We pointed it out earlier in the second quarter how East Carolina was doing a good job of spreading the defense and getting skilled people. In that case, number eight, the tight end for East Carolina. Excuse me, the, the, the ability to get the skilled person on the linebacker. Carruthers just outmanned, and she's off to the races. And Fisher can fly. Look at him pull away from Kirk Carruthers, who runs a 4-5 himself. Imperato off the snap, the spot, not pretty, but it counts. For those of us who thought that East Carolina would go gently into that good night, we were obviously mistaken. Bobby Bowden watching Fisher run untouched down the heart of Doe Campbell to put East Carolina back within 14. We have just witnessed, Keith, the longest touchdown pass in East Carolina history, thrown by the Floridian Jeff Blake to Luke Fisher that traversed 92 yards. 93, pardon me. I, oh, you're right, 92. The drive, 93. Doesn't take long in two plays, 56 seconds. Again, reiterate, getting a skilled person in and Luke Fisher on, semi-skilled, if you will, Sorry, Kirk. Kirk Carruthers, a linebacker. One-on-one -on -one confrontation, and East Carolina runs away the victim. Well, still plenty of time remaining. East Carolina battled back once in the first half, down by two touchdowns to pull within seven. Now they're down two tees again. And here comes Terrell Buckley, TV. Oh, just harness. He's the kind of player who is truly a threat to go the distance every time he touches the ball. You sense that. Fisher on the bench. Back there. He is a junior from Medford, New Jersey, 6'3", 222 pounds, and he has an evening that he'll treasure the rest of his life. We mentioned it earlier. He had an outstanding ball, and the folks associated with Pirate football say that by the time he leaves, he will be the best tight end ever to play at East Carolina. A good one in Utah tonight. The end around, Dossie pounded back at the 16-yard line. Now it's the time for study here. When you make razzle-dazzle plays in this situation and you have your top receiver hung out to dry, this is how mistakes happen, and a team that a moment ago was out of the game is suddenly back in it. Well, Seminole fans will remember 1983. See another look there at Auburn playing at home against Cal State. Remember 1983 when Florida State 
played the 47-46 game with East Carolina. Second down and long. Johnson up top. It's nearly intercepted. Should have been by Derek Fields from Clearwater, Florida. A guy who owns the East Carolina record for most interceptions. He had 14 a year ago. He'll never have one come to him as cleanly as this. It's a gift that he doesn't take. Clearly overthrown. Might have been looking at Roberts coming at him, taking his eyes off the ball just a little bit, but uh, they don't get any easier than that. I tell you, this crowd of 61,000 is stunned at the moment. FSU may be up two touchdowns, but they need to make a play here. Third and 20, deep in their own territory. Johnson backpedals, pressure on, fires in the flat, amply can't hold on, and the Knowles will punt. And momentum. Ah, she is a strange lady at times. She appears to be swinging back in favor of East Carolina, the Ascensive key. Well, you've got to be very careful in these situations. Again, I mentioned it earlier, East Carolina has come to Campbell Stadium and played some shootouts before. They can put points on the board. Blake is very talented. We saw the big play with Fisher. You can never count them out. Wimberley needs a big punt, a 10-man pirate rush. Wimberley gets it away. Deion Johnson backpedaling will kill it at his 38. Come to the near side, now start back. Has a block. He's at the 45, the 40, the 35, the 33. And indeed, East Carolina off that special teams play with exceptional field position. The Pirates have refused to uh, walk the play. Have they not tonight? A lot of Seminoles right here to make the tackle, and Johnson just splits them. He goes right between them, a la Buckley. Runs through some things, if not for some behind the ankles grabs, he could be off. Buckley appears to have hurt himself. A 44-yard punt. Buckley with a fine return. On first down, Daniels pounds the middle. Check that, Cedric Van Buren with the sure hands. The sophomore, 184-pounder from Charleston, South Carolina. Van Buren, the biggest of the tailbacks. Deion Johnson, who we saw earlier, only in at about 166, 165 pounds. Gain was of two. It was a 22-yard return, incidentally, on that punt. Total yards about even. East Carolina has 233 to 298 by Florida State. Like a major reason why. Here on the pitch, Van Buren with it. 30, 26-yard line. And down. Uh, that pitch was high. He was fortunate he didn't have a ricochet off his helmet. John Davis, the free safety, a true sophomore, came over to make the stop. Well, there again, you saw East Carolina with the two tight ends that Barry was explaining to us at halftime that Florida State had tried to make some adjustments to. The pitch may be high, Paul, but he gets it out quick enough to allow, allow some seams to be created. A great tackle there by Davis, but not before he picks up close to the first down. Hey, this is huge. Two tight ends and a single receiver to the near side. The man in motion, Charlie Tyson. Close to the first down marker. It will depend where they spot the football. I don't think that they have it. Deion Johnson, bad leg and all, hit it as hard as he could up the middle. But that front wall with Ostazewski, Joe and Henry, Troy Sanders, and Marvin Jones, shade tree was planted in there. Now it's fourth down, and obviously East Carolina with four minutes even to go in the fourth quarter will play for it. They need three feet, as you see. If they get to the 24, it's a first. The crowd roars. Blake options. I don't think he got there. David Daniel. The inside linebacker, Bryce Abbott, night thunder, and no, it's Florida State earning the football. What a great job by Abbott to submarine the play key from his inside linebacker position. Too long out of the backfield is the play. Abbott able to get in there along with some help from Marvin Jones. Don't like the play call. Should have been a quicker hitter. Too much time in the backfield. Florida State with pressure able to penetrate. The Knoll defense, solid that time. 
trying to atone for the 92-yard bomb that burned him. And Johnson having thrown for three touchdowns and run for another wants to grind out some time here. Amp Lee, second man through, is still running. Up to the 38-yard line, a pickup of 15. Nice hole on that left side, was it not? Sometimes, Paul, when things happen where a team goes for a big play, the, uh, the next team on the field kind of takes it a little personal. This time, Florida State's offense really taking it to East Carolina on that first play of the series after the defense shuts them down. Amply very close to 100 yards. Yeah, just a yard shy of it. Big night for the sophomore. The tail and the eye, the inside hand up. Three tough yards for Edgar Bennett. Bennett and Lee. I like that combination. And you still have Moore and Harris. Pinkney, the freshman, Sean Jackson. Tiger McMillan, a true freshman. And as Barry told us earlier, Chris Parker, who hopefully will be back in a week when right here, Florida State will host the top team from a 1AA football in Georgia Southern. When they were here two years ago, they gave Florida State fits. They can play this game. Bennett hemmed in, dances away, comes back to the middle, and fights close to the first down. Ed Brogdon, the senior free safety on the stop. Remember that game with East Carolina? It was uh, East Carolina, pardon me, with uh, Georgia Southern, Keith. They were leading Florida State in the fourth quarter, and the Knowles had to rally to win. And a year ago, Georgia Southern, a perfect 15-0, and and they won the 1AA national title. Well, they have the longest winning streak in 1AA. Florida State currently with the longest winning streak in one single A. Fryer to the left, Dossie to the right, and Johnson elects to keep it on the ground. And he picks up the first on third down. First down, Seminoles, and again in East Carolina territory, amply knocked down by Robert Jones. Goes over the 100-yard mark. You would not have expected Amp to carry the ball 17 times coming into the contest, especially since we're just a minute 40 left to go still in the third quarter. Florida State, Coach Bowden and his staff leaving it on the ground more than some might have expected. First and 10 at midfield, leading 38-24, a minute and 30 seconds to go. Johnson in trouble. Now he can run. Instead, elects to throw, and it's caught by Pryor at the 30. And down to the 28-yard line. His first collegiate reception is one to remember. The freshman from Live Oak. Great hands and concentration. Brady, the linebacker on the stop, a gain of 22. Fryer from Live Oak, Swanee High School, just about 80 miles from Tallahassee, is the state high school record holder for receptions. 220 catches in high school. Redshirted last year, worked himself into a starting position. They call him Hands. Absolutely. Johnson, the numbers on him. He gets it back. Loose ball, East Carolina nearly had the turnover. Brad Johnson certainly settled down, didn't he? After, uh, I don't want to say less than solid first quarter, but there were some shaky moments in there, weren't there tonight for him? I don't think you ever have to expect Brad to get rattled. Sometimes he won't be quite on. He's very mature. He's been in very stressful situations as a freshman on the basketball team for Pat Kennedy. Part-time starter, six-man off the bench. Very instrumental in a win over Louisville a couple, three years ago here in the Civic Center. I don't think you can expect him to get rattled, but sometimes he will not be as sharp, and now I think he's getting in the groove. Second down, the Knowles lead a dozen after losing 12. They set up the straight in the flat. Fire again as quickly corralled and uh, yanked down by senior Donald Porch. Yeah, the time in the lower right portion of your screen indicates that the third quarter is now history. 15 minutes of football. Still await us here in Doak Campbell Stadium, and when you return, you'll join 61,000 who have watched thus far Florida State build this 38-24 advantage. 
an excellent premier tonight as the starting quarterback for Brad Johnson. Three touchdown passes, and he scored one himself. And here, he flips it out of the backfield. Bennett makes one miss, 20, 15, still tight loping down the sidelines, inside the 10-yard line. First down, Florida State. That earned 15 yards. I guess we're going to see a lot of Johnson to Bennett this year. Watch some great poise right here. Watch Bennett bring the ball back in to elude the tackler. Watch Reggie Johnson on the left-hand part of your screen. Watch the screen block. Doesn't get the penalty, gets Bennett another 10 yards. Great, great decision there by Reggie Johnson not to do something. Big Reggie Dixon and Hayward Haynes, offensive lineman to the left of Brad Johnson. You saw him there in the eye. Amply the tailback. Bennett, correct, falling forward. Still on his feet, touchdown. I think Reggie Dixon gave him the final impetus into the end zone. His own teammate, the tackle, held him up, got him in. Ernie Lewis, the linebacker, bumped him at an inopportune time. It just sent him goalward. And the Knowles have roared past the 40-point plateau on opening night. Florida State's averaged in the six previous contests about 45 points. Dixon, number 73, is going to direct him into the end zone. Watch his right hand. He's going to wave him on into the end zone. He threw him into the end zone. You can't do that, I didn't think. I didn't say he threw him. I said he waved him. You can in rugby. Andrews, the extra point. Richie's picked a bunch of them tonight. One, two, three, four, five. See if you can pick up big Reggie Dixon tossing his fullback into the end zone. Good cut by Bennett to get in the hole. Coming right at you. And watch number 73. Kind of grab him by the back and <laughs> swing him around. <laughs> this way. Hey, it counts for six. Nine plays, 75 yards, and Bennett has scored not one, not two, but three touchdowns tonight. He'll be telling family and friends about this one when this decade is history. 45-24. Meanwhile, this has become one that Bill Lewis would just as soon forget. To the left, Van Buren. To the right, of course, Deion Johnson. We need to check in in a moment with uh, Barry Milligan. But he got a great view of that touchdown run by Bennett. Andrews cocks it on the tee. Got a very busy night. Got a field goal that handed Florida State its initial lead at 10 to 7. That came in the first quarter good from 30 yards out and has just added the 45th point of the game. And still another kickoff. This is Johnson from his nine. Rather short kick. Already at the 25. And uh, stacked up there. The drive uh, for Florida State. Uh, a play shy at 10. 75 yards. Uh, just under four minutes. Bennett, his third touchdown this evening. And Barry Milligan, it's been a big night for double twos for FSU. A great night for Edgar Bennett, Paul. A fullback's power with tailback speed. You saw his great versatility on consecutive plays. The last time Bennett was timed in the 40, he was under 4-5. So, indeed, the power of a fullback, and you saw with that swing pass, able to carry it like a tailback once he gets his hands on the ball. Six touchdowns tonight, Barry and Keith, for Florida State. Big, big night. Blake still at the helm, down a bunch, runs the option to the short side, keeps it, and rolled out of bounds by Marvin Jones. Close to the first down marker. Right now, we'll call it nine, make it uh, eight. They say he stepped out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Pickup of eight. I would take Jeff Blake as a quarterback. I think he can truly hold his own in major college football. Well, he's, we haven't seen as much of it as can be, but he's got a very strong arm. And as you saw there, can run the ball as well. Trying to run it up the middle with little success is uh, David Daniels. Joe Ostaszewski, who's made a bunch of stops this evening, number 75, waving his arms. You're supposed to be tired on a night like this. 
Not the big O in Joe Ostrzewski. Well, for the first time in uh, four years, Florida State will taste victory once again. They lost two in a row on opening night. Blake down the line. Nobody picked him up. Still galloping and out to midfield. Florida State will give him that. East Carolina content to take it. How big was that defensive series when on fourth and one, down by two touchdowns, deep in Florida State territory, East Carolina could not earn the first down? Well, obviously it's going to loom very big, especially in light of what's happening right now. Tried to get the ball deeper in the backfield than I would have, and Florida State stuffed it. An 11-yard pickup there for Blake. A couple for Daniels. Jones, again, has made a number of tackles. This true freshman from Miami right there. What an impressive debut Jones has enjoyed tonight. Now 6'2", 220. He's getting a lot of playing time because Bryce Abbott, who starts in front of him, you see him there, number 23, just checking in. Actually was not cleared to play in the ball game until Tuesday of this week. Had some problems in his neck. Blake works this way, starts back the other way, and is knocked off his feet at the 46-yard line by Todd McIntosh. Still another first-year man, although he's a redshirt freshman uh, from Texas, Richardson, Texas, just north of Dallas. 6'3", 2 55. There are so many young players for defensive coordinator Mickey Andrews and Bobby Bowden on the defensive side of the football. Coach Bowden and Andrews saying this is his youngest defense by far in a long, long time. Your top 22 on defense, you have three seniors. Three. Whiz, whiz. Blake backpedaling. Third and six. Whoa! Florida State says it has the football. That's the case. Carl Simpson, the defensive tackle, a redshirt sophomore, number 95, stripped Blake of the ball, and here's how it happened. Watch him come. Comes right up the middle. Nobody seems to notice that the ball came loose. You see it right there, clearly loose. Gets piled up underneath players. And a sliding Florida State player comes across very alertly to get the ball. Simpson, just a sophomore out of Baxley, Georgia. They have produced some all-stars. Dexter Carter, Appling County High School. Dexter Carter will be playing tomorrow in another garnet and gold uniform <laughs> for the San Francisco 49ers. We certainly wish him well. Not seeing Casey Weldon at quarterback tonight. Brad Johnson has gone all the way, throwing on the run here, complete. First down, 30-yard line. Dave Roberts, the tight end, made the catch and then wrapped both arms, burly arms around it. Ernie Lewis, the linebacker, a sophomore, took him down. Roberts has been in graduate school for so long that he will have a master's degree when his football ends. That is a rarity, is it not? Second team All-American, academic All-American last year. Extremely well respected by his teammates a great contributor. Seems as if he's been around here nine, ten years. <laughs> Certainly has matured as if he had. Here comes Felix the other way. Oh, taken down shy of the line of scrimmage. He'll lose yardage. Still hustling. Still trying for East Carolina. Tony Wortham, a reserve defensive tackle. Got into the game, made the play. They'll lose one. It is fourth down and uh, Bobby Bowden. With the decision, does he go for it here? Does he send Richie Andrews out on the field to uh, to attempt the three-pointer? Now he's going to send him a veteran, Lawrence Dossie, with the play from the sidelines. Well, you're looking at about a 47, 48 yarder from this distance in terms of attempting the field goal. Baker to the bottom of your screen. Dossie to replace Terrell to the top. Johnson floats it over the middle. Dossie can't hold on. Called his own number and then didn't make the catch. The throw just a bit high. And it's East Carolina's football on downs with the shade under 11 minutes remaining, 10.53 to be exact. Florida State still with a stranglehold on the scoreboard, 45-24, but Coach Bowden doesn't like to see that. Kind of zip that ball, a little less touch. He was open. Throw it to him. You don't think that guy can't get intense. You don't know him very well. 
You were at breakfast with him early this morning, Keith. I know at an FCA breakfast. He got intense there, didn't I he? I made the mistake of talking about win number 200 before I could even get it out of my mouth. He reminded me that 196 hadn't come. A new quarterback for East Carolina, that is Chad Greer, who wears number seven, a transfer who began his career at the University of Richmond. Cedric Van Buren was the ball carrier and picked up uh, about five yards on the play. Greer, 6'4", 208 out of Charlotte, North Carolina, lettered a couple of times for Dal Sheely at the University of Richmond. In fact, directed the Spiders into the NCAA playoffs two years ago. Transferred, though, to East Carolina and a mop-up roll right now. Johnson, for the first down, drives it across the 40 up to the 41-yard line. And for a guy who's seen a lot of action on a warm night in Tallahassee, he hit that hole fairly crisply. Van Buren and Johnson, both from their tailback position, give a good dimension to this East Carolina team. But, Cam Paul, go back to breakfast this morning, again, talking with Coach Bowden this morning about 10 minutes after 8. We were talking about the Miami game. Should Florida State be successful in their first four? Would be win number 200 for him. Of course, Coach Bowden, the number two active win in this coach in, in America right now. And he cut me off short. He said, Keith, we got to get 196 first. The uh, Pirates were marked just shy of the first down, so Greer keeps it on the quarterback sneak and earns it. Yeah, after the consecutive failures, Miami and last season, Southern Miss, he was so very focused on tonight. I mean, the heat was on. He was not convinced they could win, but he darn well had put in all the effort that he could. Players, coaches, they hit a great deal. Would this be the hardest that they have hit in the tree? Banged up and bruised? By far it would. Greer floats it down the middle, incomplete. Had it deflected underneath. Hunting Whiting and his tight end Fisher came up behind him. Had a chance to visit Paul with Jim Gladden on the Saturday after two days was over. That'd be a week ago today. And Coach Gladden uh, recruited me out of high school. Been with Bowden for 15 years here at Florida State. Coaches the outside linebackers. And we were talking just casually. And he just looked up at me and said, Keith, this is the most beat up football team I've ever seen. And we haven't played a single ball game yet. That was a week ago. On the defensive side, they lost Dan Footman to injury, Oliver Strickman, Billy Glenn, James Cheney, DeAndre Clark. Greer swings it out of the backfield, has it completely up near midfield, still shy of a first down is David Daniels. Quick Sterling Palmer out of the flat, made the tackle after a gain of seven. There is Palmer. Called by his coaches the most dominant tackler of spring practice. You'll see him make the stop here after a couple of misses. There he goes. Now you see Bill Reagan's another big hitter in that secondary, take a little bit too much of an outside attack and get sidestep. Florida State up by, believe it or not, only about 107 yards total offense. 90 of those, however, came in one play. Whiting was well out of bounds when he made the catch. Reagan's gave him a little shot too. And uh, Greer can't get it done. Florida State will have the football back, 8.37 remaining in this one before Bill Lewis and company return to Greenville with an even record of one win and five losses. Yet there will be brighter days for this head coach. One of the few North, or East Carolina coaches that has enjoyed success in recent years there. Oh, here at Green. Throw it. Uh, does have the first down. I was off a down. And he picks it up to Charlie Tyson on the crossing route. The senior flanker, Terrell Buckley, right on his back. Casey Weldon has been warming on the sidelines. And we may see the second Florida State quarterback of the night. Junior out of Tallahassee. A good look at Casey. He was in quite a duel as Bowden called him, nip and tuck during spring practice. Tuck, however, was Brad Johnson, and he passed nip. <laughs> it was Weldon, who Bowden and company thought would uh, be the starting quarterback, but it has to happen on the practice field, of course, and Johnson earned the job. Total passing tonight, quite even, but if you take out that 92-yard gain on the touchdown pass to Fisher, it certainly is much more in favor of FSU. Woo! FSU! Bravo. 
few happy faces in the crowd. Great crowd it was, the sixth largest in FSU history. Greer on the option, pitches, spinning Van Buren and attracting a crowd. Dinkins there first. John Davis second. The starting defensive unit in part and parcel has been out there still throughout much of this drive getting a lot of work. There you see the crowd. They had sold 53,000 tickets yesterday, had a walk up of better than eight. The no shows were minimal. And it's the sixth largest crowd in the history of Florida State. Greer airborne from midfield. Everybody's covered. Look out. So he forces it and has it complete. Fisher came back, earns the first at the 29 yard line, a broken play. Dinkins giving chase. Fisher makes an excellent adjustment, getting himself in a position where Greer could deliver the ball to him. Gets flushed out. Now what happens is Fisher works back to him, separates himself from the defense, gives him the opportunity to deliver the ball over Deacons and converts the first down. That was a gain of a dozen. East Carolina with uh, 170 yards now through the air. And they align on the near side hash, first and 10 at the Seminole 29 yard line, trying to add seven to this score. Working the middle, David Daniels once again. It's been a busy night for him. Mike McCallop, the junior from Keenanville, North Carolina, number 72, the uh, right guard was in your picture for a moment. You saw 73, Tom Scott, the tackle on this left side. A huge tackle. He weighs 235 pounds. There he is. There's a wall out there. Greer. Pressure. Fires. Deflected incomplete hunting. Whiting. And it was all Greer could do to get rid of the football before Anthony Moss flattened it. Good coverage. Corvey and White doing a good job of teaming up over there. It's that big pad on the left arm of John White protects those biceps. Strong safety position. You get really beat up in there. Every little extra bit of padding you can get on vital areas is very appreciative. Greer is three of seven through the air thus far for 24 yards. Facing third and 11 now. Again, the heavy rush. And he has it complete. First down. Nice concentration by Al Whiting, a two-year letterman and a senior out of Dazelle, South Carolina. A veteran who can concentrate Keith in traffic. Well, you see Greer doing what he does best. Not a pretty pass, but very effective. Whiting doing a good job of going across the middle, the senior. He's been there before. You know who made the tackle? Keith Jones. Yes, it is possible for somewhere to be two places in one time. No, this one's a different one. He wears number 46, Keith Jones, a reserve defensive back for Florida State, the sophomore from Auburndale, Florida. Bet you he's your favorite player. Here's Greer, right down the middle. Intercepted! John Davis, a great diving catch. He rocketed out of coverage. I promise you, Greer never saw him when he was gunning for Charlie Tyson at the goal line. Florida, nickel, Florida State in their nickel package. Davis just standing in the middle, and he breaks on the ball. You're right. I'm sure Greer never saw him. Exactly what you asked the free safety to do when he's not matched up. Play center field and watch him. Sophomore did it just like they planned. The fourth turnover earned by Florida State, that towards a solid drive under the direction of Greer. Davis has his first interception of the season. The crowd roars in appreciation for the arrival of Casey Weldon. The junior 6'1", 194 from Tallahassee, North Florida Christian Academy here. Mobile and experienced. And the inside the handoff will earn two, three yards out to the uh, eight yard line. Carrying it out that way was Sean Jackson, another first year performer from New Orleans. 
East Carolina, the recipient of five turnovers last week, three interceptions and two fumbles. This time they give it up three to only one for Florida State. You know, when you talk about Weldon, Paul, you're talking about a guy that only completed 12 passes last year, five of them for touchdowns. He has seven touchdowns in his career. Made one miss. Jackson could not make two miss. And it was a solid hit that took him off his feet. And a stop made by Eric Taylor, number 66 in your picture, the reserve nose guy. Four and a half minutes in counting. Weldon uh, against Tulane last year, I recall, threw two touchdown passes, and they came back to back. One went for 88 yards, and his very next toss went for 58 yards and a touchdown. It was boom and yeah. boom. You see the 12 completions, five TDs. Very good ratio. Scrambling in his own end zone, and he just throws it away, and uh, Florida State will punt it away with 401 remaining in the football game. John Wimberley, a yard deep into his own end zone, gets it away, and oh, he hit a beauty. Deion Sanders, 65 yards. Deion Sanders. Deion Johnson, 65 yards away. Had to let it down. The Knowles got it there. A perfect night for football. And if you're a Florida State fan, you certainly have enjoyed this. 45-24 the score. Brad Johnson tonight, Keith, 20 of 28 through the air, about 80%. 187 yards, three touchdowns, ran one himself. It's second down now for East Carolina. Van McBride dropped for a three-yard loss on the first play. And boom, another pirate pays the price. Marvin Jones is turning out to be a wicked hitter. On that defense, Cedric Van Buren is tattooed. He just matches him straight up and then stands him up and then with a little help from his friends, works him backwards. Folks will remember Fred, Fred Jones, wore number 55 also for Florida State, middle 80s, known as a ferocious hitter, and Marvin is a, is a clone, if you will. He can play this game, no doubt about it. Trying to fill Keith Carter's slot on that left side. Look out. Took him down. A fellow, another fellow whose brother was a fair college football player, albeit at Miami, Winston Moss, the <laughs> older brother of Anthony. That's a loss of 11. Another sack for that front wall. 11 sacks coming into the contest did Anthony Moss have in his career. Adds to it right there. Speaking of adding, Anthony Moss has added 45 pounds of pure muscle since he walked onto this campus four years ago. 45 pounds. A tremendous football player. East Carolina heading in reverse. Time to punt. John Jett to do so against an eight-man rush. 2.15 to go in the game. Taking a lot of time, play clock at 10. Jet with the low snap, fields it, gets it away. And here will come Buckley. Starts to the far side. If he can pick up a wall, he'll be running a while. 40, 45, midfield, out of bounds. Nearly popped it a long, long way. The waiting moments of what will be victory number one for Florida State. The Knowles in possession of the football and uh, encountering a bit of difficulty with things at the uh, 49 yard line is Sean Jackson, the freshman. Oh, we've enjoyed this one, Keith, although for FSU fans, there were more than a couple of anxious moments tonight. Well, I think Florida State will be happy with the victory. I think uh, Brad Scott, offensive coordinator, will be disappointed in the offense's inability to capitalize and convert sometimes, and I know that uh, Mickey Andrews, defensive coordinator, is going to be disappointed in at least a few of the plays that the defense made, i.e. the big plays that uh, allowed East Carolina to stay in the ballgame. Bowden's record will remain perfect against East Carolina. He is 9-0 lifetime, 7-0 at Florida State. Safe is Casey Weldon at midfield, and the clock continues to run. Less than a minute remaining. Brad Johnson, a big night. 
the proof in the pudding. His first start, the fourth starter in four years at Florida State, but the first one that's been an underclassman, just a junior. I think he'll be well pleased. And that win streak of 11 games, the longest Division I play, continues for Florida State. And it ends that dreaded opening day phobia, which has hung like a cloud over this campus for years. It's forever getting over last year. Here comes Jackson. Nowhere to go. That'll do it. This game is over. You count it down. Florida State has beaten East Carolina. 45-24. That 196th victory that I keep that he wanted so badly at breakfast this morning. Well, like I could say uh, he was very adamant in the determination that his squad had to bring into this contest. Uh, for too often, Florida State uh, had not performed well, as we've talked about all night. Florida State goes to 11 and 3 under Bowden and openers, 7 and 0 here in Campbell. Bobby Bowden said that we would need Lady Luck a few times this season to have a national championship year. He made his own luck this evening. Florida State a winner in a big way tonight. Offensively, defensively, and with the kicking game. We'll return to Doak Campbell Stadium in just a moment. Your final again, the Knowles 45. East Carolina 24.